Good morning. So today we are going to discuss how to solve for radical equations. So let's have first the definition of radical equation. A radical equation is an equation containing at least one radical expression which a radicand has a variable. So these are examples of radical equations. So we have fifth root of x is equal to 7, cube root of x plus 3 is equal to negative 5, we also have 4th root of x minus 1 minus 8 is equal to 6. We also have negative 2 is equal to 3x plus square root of 5x. Okay, so these are not radical equations. So we have their cube root of 5 plus x is equal to 6. 4th root of 7 plus 3 is equal to y. So, why is it that they are not radical equations since they do not contain a variable in the radicand which is one of the definition of our radical equation? Okay, now, let's solve for a radical equation. So, first example, we have square root of x plus 1 is equal to 5. So, we are going to transpose first the 1 to the other side. So, we have there square root of x is equal to 5 minus 1. And 5 minus 1 is equal to 4. Now, we are going to square both sides. We cancel the index and the exponent, leaving us x. And 4 squared is equal to 16. So, for number 1, we are going to check if x is really the solution to our radical equation. So, to check for this, we will be using the same equation. So, square root of x plus 1 is equal to 5. And we are going to substitute the 16 to x. So, we have there square root of 16. We copy plus 1 is equal to 5. And square root of 16 is equal to 4 plus 1 is equal to 5. 4 plus 1 is equal to 5. We copy equal to 5. And since this is true, we can say that x is equal to 16 is really the solution to our original equation. Okay, let's have the second example. Cube root of x plus 2 plus 1 is equal to 4. Now, we are going to transpose the 1 to the right side. So, we are going to have there cube root of x plus 2 is equal to 4 minus 1. And 4 minus 1, that gives us equal to 3. Now, we are going to cube both sides. So, we have there. So, we cancel the index and the exponent. We are left with x plus 2 is equal to 3 cubed, that is 27. Now, we transpose the 2 to the right side. So, we are going to have there 27 minus 2 and that would give us equal to 25. Again, we are going to check if 25 is really the solution to our radical equation. So, again, we will be using the same original equation. We simply substitute 25 to our x. So, we are going to have there 25 plus 2 plus 1 is equal to 4. And cube root of 25 plus 2, that would give us cube root of 27 plus 1 is equal to 4. Cube root of 27 is 3. We copy plus 1 is equal to 4. 3 plus 1, that is 4, which is equal to 4. And since this is true, we can say that 25 is the solution to the original equation. Okay, let's have example number 3. Cube root of 2x plus 2 is equal to cube root of x plus 4. So this original equation, we are going to cube automatically both sides. So we can cancel this. We are left with 2x plus 2 is equal to, we cancel this also, we are left with x plus 4. Now we are going to combine all like terms, meaning to say all variables to the left side. So 2x minus x, then 4 minus 2 on the right side. And 2x minus x, that would give us x is equal to 4 minus 2 is equal to 2. So x is equal to 2. Now we are going to check this. Substitute this to the original equation. So we have there cube root of 2 times 2 plus 2 is equal to cube root of 2 plus 4. 2 times 2 is equal to 4 plus 2, and 2 plus 4 is 6. So 4 plus 2, that would give us cube root of 6, 
then we copy cube root of 6. And since again it is true, x is equal to 2 is the solution to the original equation. Okay, let's have the fourth example. So we have there square root of x plus 3 is equal to square root of x plus 3. So again, our example number 4, 3 on the left side is part of the radicand. But on the uh, right side, 3 is no longer part of the radicand. Okay, so we are going to have or to square both sides first. So we cancel this. We are left with x plus 3 is equal to. Now take a look at this one. This is what we call or we are actually going to square the binomial here. So, grade 8 lesson, first step is square the first term. So, our first term here is square root of x. So, we simply square that one. Okay, second step, we are going to have twice the first and the second term. So, meaning to say twice the first term is square root of x, second is 3. So, therefore, that would give us square root of x times 3. Okay, next step is square the last term. Our last term there is 3. So therefore, that would give us 3 squared. Okay, now we are going to simplify. So we have there, we copy, we cancel the index and the exponent leaving us x. So 2 times square root of x times 3, that is 6 square root of x. And 3 squared is 9. Now, we are going to combine all like terms, variables to the left and constant to the right side. So, we have there x. So, we copy. This one is transposed to the left. That would give us minus x. And 6 square root of x also is on the left side. So, that's minus 6 square root of x is equal to 9. We copy. Then, plus 3 becomes minus 3. Now, we have here x minus x. That's 0, so leaving us negative 6 square root of x. 9 minus 3 is equal to 6. So we divide everything by negative 6. We cancel this, leaving us square root of x is equal to negative 1. So we are going to square both sides. So we cancel this, leaving us x is equal to 1. Now, our x here, which is equal to 1, this time we are going to check if x is equal to 1 is really the solution to our radical equation number 4. So again, we will be using the original equation. Simply substitute 1. So we have there 1 plus 3 is equal to square root of 1 plus 3. 1 plus 3 is equal to square root of 4. And square root of 1 is 1, we copy plus 3. Square root of 4 is 2. And 1 plus 3 is 4. So if you have noticed, 2 is not equal to 4, which is false. So meaning to say this x is equal to 1 is what we call an extraneous solution. And what is an extraneous solution? It is an apparent solution that does not solve the given equation. Okay, so that's all for today. I hope you've learned something about how to solve the radical equations. Thank you.